Fusion Cam isn't nearly as difficult as it looks. By the end of this video, I'll show you exactly how to set up your stock and your working coordinate system, create clean 2D toolpaths for pockets, profiles, and contours, adjust all the important parameters, heights, depths, ramping tabs and feeds, and finally, how to post your G-code for your CNC. The entire process will be shown so you can follow every click and understand what matters and what doesn't. Let's get started. We'll be using this model that I built in a previous video and we'll get something that comes out like this. So we're gonna switch over from the design tab up here and go down to the manufacturing tab. For simple parts like this, Fusion will import your model, but we still need to define the setup. On this top bar up here, click setup. And this is where we're going to define your machine's point of references. You're telling Fusion what the model is, what the stock is, and what your contour system is. For simple parts like this, Fusion does a really good job about guessing what you need. This yellow box is the stock, and it's exactly what we're going to be cutting into. Fusion also pulled in the coordinate system from our design workspace, so that's super convenient, especially on parts like this, and we'll check it anyway, um, but this looks good, our y-axis and our x-axis. So heading over to this panel, we don't need to select machine. We wanna make sure that our operation type is milling, and for this model, the orientation is correct and our axes are right. But if they're not, you can drop down and then you can choose your X and Y. And you can also pick the axes from this origin line under the name views. But for right now, we're gonna click continue with model orientation. Now the stock point is where you're going to be setting your zero point. So for us, I want it to be the lower left corner and the top of the model. So I'll click this, but you can also choose the bottom or the middle if that's what you're into. For the model, it automatically picks what we're looking at. And now we're gonna switch over to the stock. So right next to setup, you can press stock. There's a lot of different types. For woodworking, I typically like to use fixed box size because well, I'm cutting from a piece of wood. For our width, which is the X direction. I'm going to make that 13. That gives us a little bit of extra to hang on to. I could probably make it a little bit less if I wanted to, but it's the stock I have. We're gonna make the depth nine and a quarter. The depth is going in the Y axis. And the height, I'm going to make it 1.13 because that's the model height, which it also shows down here, which makes it quite convenient and press OK. All right, so now we have our model. On the top panel up here, we're gonna click the down arrow and we're gonna do a 2D pocket cut. We'll select our tool. And I already have tools that I've used for this build, um, but we're gonna show you how to find them. In the vendor section, there are a ton of tools that you can pick from. Uh, one of the common ones for CNC's is Amana. So I'm gonna click on Amana and I can filter to a diameter of 0.25. And there's a ton of different options on here. For this one, we want to do a, use a flat end mill, and we'll just pick this top one. So it imp imports all the information we're doing, and I'm going to just change this around to what my machine will cut. So for me, I'm gonna do a cutting feed rate of 100, and we're gonna do a ramp feed rate of 50. And I'm gonna turn off flooding. You wanna make sure that you do this for your tool. I know this works for the bits I'm using. Now we're gonna go over to the next tab, which is the machine type, and we can just take a quick gander and then go to the geometry tab. For the geometry tab, we are going to click on all the pockets that we wanna cut, and that's it. We can go to the heights tab and take your time going over the heights. You have a clearance height, a retract height, feed height, top height, and bottom height. Um, typically, you really don't have to mess with these at all. But say you wanted to cut a little bit deeper, you can put a negative value in here and it'll cut the pockets a little bit deeper. So now we're going to switch over to the passes tab. There are a lot of options here, and I'm going to walk you through the ones that are the most useful. Both ways is great if you're trying to get a fast cut through, but I'm gonna do one way so that it's a nicer, cleaner cut. For maximum step over, we're gonna make it at 0.15. So this is how much the bit steps over. Now we're gonna set a multiple depths. 
I don't want to cut directly into this super fast. So I'm going to step it down each time. For my bit, I'm going to use, do point two. We're not going to do any finishing step downs. We are going to use even step downs. We're not going to do a finishing pass and we're going to take off stock to leave. So that's all you have to do in this. Just to recap, we just want to check our maximum step over. We want to do multiple depths, head over to the linking tab. We're going to leave these the same. We're going to leave the lead in, the lead out, and we're going to jump right down to the ramp. We do want to do a ramp, but if we do a two degree ramp, it ends up taking a long time to start actually cutting into the wood. So we're going to change this to 30 degrees. And we can leave this part the same and we're pretty good with all the rest of it. Now we can press OK. And you get a preview of what we're cutting. And if you back further away, you can kind of see the lines of the actual part. And you can see that it didn't cut into the fillets that were down around the corners, which is OK. We're going to do that on the next path. Now we'll clear the corners and create a fillet with a bigger bit. So for this, we'll go to 2D, 2D contour. We're going to select our tool. And for this one, we are going to play with the filters. I want to do a ball nose end mill. We're going to click on vendor to reset. We're going to use our units of inches. The diameter is one inch. And our corner radius is 0.25. And there are a lot of options in here. And they're not quite the exact same ones I have. I'm going to be using a Rockler bit. But for any purpose, I'm just going to pick one of these. And it doesn't actually fill in any of this information. You can always check the manufacturer's website. But I'm going to just fill it into my machine that I'm going to use. We're going to do 20,000 RPMs. But I also control the RPMs manually. Cutting feed rate, I'm going to make 100. And ramp feed rate will make 50. We're going to disable coolant. We're going to go over to geometries now. Since we can't really pick the radius on these contours, we're going to pick this upper contour. Like that. Now we selected all of our contours and we will go over to the heights. And for the bottom height, we don't want to cut it at the selective contour. We actually want to do it to a selection. So we can do it right to this face. Since they're all the same height, that'll work for us. Passes, and we're going to leave all this pretty much the same. The only thing we're going to add is multiple depths. And I've actually never used this bit before, so I'm going to make it 0.125. Then we're going to hold over to linking. If ramp isn't added yet, I'm going to add a ramp and I'm going to make it 30 degrees and just press OK. And that looks pretty good. Now, to keep things a little bit more organized, I'm actually going to go back right now and rename our tool paths. So we have our first 2D pocket and we can name this pocket 0.25. That way I know what it is and what bit I'm going to be using for it. And I'll add EM for end mill. For the contour, we're going to long click on that. We're going to say contour 1.25 bull nosed end mill. I lied. I'm going to change this to pocket profile 1.25 ball nosed or bull nosed end mill. Now for the final perimeter cut. I like to save this for last so that the part doesn't move around on you as you're cutting the pockets. So once again, we'll do 2D contour. Since we already used a quarter inch end mill, we can click this and then click our end mill and all the information will be added into it. We're gonna to go to geometry. And for this one, we're gonna pick silhouette. This projects the entire shape onto the bottom plane, which is great for profiling. Now we'll add tabs to this to make sure it's securely held as it's cutting it out. So we'll enable tabs. I'm going to do a triangular tab. For tab width, I'm going to do 0.375. And tab height, I'm going to do a quarter of an inch. I'm going to leave it at two inches spacing. 
For the heights, we're all good here. We're going to do the selected contours. We want to make sure that we enable multiple finishing passes. We're going to set it to two, and we're going to do the step over at 0 0.025, which is just enough to skim along the wall, but not put a lot of stress on the bit. We want to do multiple depths. For this, I'm going to do 0.2 deep so that each step is cutting down 0.2. And then we want to make sure that we have finish only at final depth enabled. What this does is make sure that the last pass is only against the wall so that we don't end up with different layers. Now we can go to linking. If your ramp isn't on, turn on ramping, set it 30 degrees, press OK. And now, we're all done. And we're going to rename this bowl profile 0.25 and mill. Now we're ready to post or create the G code. I want to reduce the number of tool changes. So what I'm going to do is the profile cut of the bowl first. So I'm going to just move that up there. I'm going to right click and say create and see program. You can name this whatever you want. So for this, I'll just do pocket, profile, and bullnose end mill. I only have the one. I'll know what it is, and that's why it's important is for you to know. If you've never used this before, you're going to want to change the post. You're not going to have anything in here, but you can click on select post from your library, Fusion Library, and Fusion will have a ton of different ones. For me, I will be using the Artsoft. Mach 3 mail. So I can keep on that. Have all that. And the only other thing to check is the safe retract and home position under post properties. By default, it's going to be G28. And what this does is it brings it to your machine home. I found that unless you have that set up appropriately and you're looking at multiple things in Fusion or in Mach 3, I tend to crash my machine. So what's much easier is just clicking this down and saying clearance height. When the program is done running, the bit will just go up and stop at clearance height. Press OK. I'm going to select both my 0.25 end mills, right click, and say create NC program. I'm going to name this pocket and profile 0.25 end mill. I want to make sure that my safe retract height is at my clearance height. And if you want to take a gander, next to settings, you can go to your operations and you have a list of all of them. So if you need to check off, check off any of them, you can do that. Go to settings. And now we can just say post. That's the full Fusion Cam workflow for a real project. We've defined your setup, created three different tool paths with different functions, worked through the critical parameters, and posted G code that you can now use on your CNC. It's not magic. It's just understanding the flow once and then doing it again and again and playing with different things as you're going and you're ready to cut. If you like this video, make sure you press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more Fusion 360 and woodworking tips.